Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is an exciting day, let me show you why. I have finally got all of my tools organized after the long trip back from Tennessee. Check it out. Ah, huh? I finally, finally, finally know where everything is. And you know what that means. It's time to get started on the next project. Let me show you what that is. It is a 1999 GMC 6500 Top Kick. Now I've told you before what I'm gonna be turning this into, but if you haven't seen uh, previous episodes, it will become a high-end commercial pizza truck. I've built one of these before. Let me show you a picture of how the last one turned out. I loved it. It is living in Chicago slinging pizzas just about every day. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. Instead of doing a rear service door, I believe we're gonna be doing a mid service door, and then I might change up the window configuration a little bit, and then our interior setup. Now before I can do any of that, I do need to make sure that it is mechanically sound. I just made a 2,000 mile journey from Nashville to Spokane with the only issue being a fuel pump that gave out in Gillette, Wyoming that's already been replaced. Before I left, I did do a chemical repair to a mechanical problem where I used the Blue Devil head gasket sealant instead of taking the entire engine apart. Now that I've got my shop set up, I will be taking this engine apart and replacing anything else I see along the way that needs replacing, like the injectors, the ignition coil, and the timing chain. Once I do that and it's mechanically sound, I can then get the box off and start the process of converting this. Now before I do the engine today, I'm going to try and tackle this front bumper. You can see it's got a little bit of a ding. Just about every one of these trucks that I've worked on has had a love tap and it's usually in that front passenger side corner because that's the hardest place to see out of. So I'm going to use the come along along with my ground anchors to pull from this side while probably heating up and using a hammer to kind of see if I can massage it back to place. So let's get started on that and then get this truck in there and get that engine taken apart.
right, guys. Well, this engine bay is looking quite bare. I've got everything laid out over here to kind of try and keep it organized while I'm waiting on all of the replacement parts. I just wanted to show you how I organize these things. Here we have all of the nuts and bolts from it. Now, what I would do if this was something that I didn't work on regularly, I would label where everything goes. So I'd actually have a Sharpie and I would write out where that one bolt went and I'd do a little circle around it. But as you can see, there's not a ton of bolts associated with this. And a lot of it is pretty simple. You know, that's intake manifold. This is exhaust manifold. Those are going to be your valve covers. And then there's basically nothing else. So I just have them laid out here just so I don't lose any of them, but no need to label them. Next step is going to be ordering up all the replacement parts. And then we play a little bit of a waiting game. Here's what the cylinder heads are looking like. Now, obviously on the vehicle, these are flipped over. So this is going to be cylinders one, three, five, and seven. And then this is two, four, six, and eight. I was trying to figure out where exactly the head gasket failure was. My initial thought, just from a quick glance, was this little buildup here. It looks like could be sodium and potassium burning inside the combustion chamber, which would be from coolant. But the only spot where I can see on the ring that goes around it on the actual head gasket that has any burn marks on it is right here. Everything else on both sides of both gaskets looks fine. So what I'm thinking is that, uh, what would this be, the number eight cylinder? I think that we are getting just a little bit of coolant that was coming in from here into this combustion chamber and then burning up. The next step is to get these cylinder heads to the machine shop where they will resurface them. They'll do a cylinder leak down check and then uh, have them do the valve seals while they're at it. Then we'll get these back in hopefully three, four days. All right, guys, what we're looking at here is the oil sample analysis for this truck for the 2200 mile drive from Nashville to Spokane. Now, this is right after I did the Blue Devil treatment and an oil change, and we're seeing that the head gasket held about as well as could be expected. We still have elevated levels of potassium and sodium along with a higher viscosity than I'd like to see, but we knew we weren't consuming any coolant and it's much lower than it was before. What concerns me here are the elevated levels of iron, copper, and lead. I'm worried that we've got a bearing issue deep inside this engine and we're already this far so it only makes sense to go ahead and pull the front radiator support and get the entire short block out and get it inspected. All right, guys, so I showed you that I got a report back from Blackstone that was showing accelerated bearing wear on this engine. But before I put this in the back of the truck and take it to the machine shop, I want to pull off these bearing caps and show you what the bearings are looking like. All right, this is the first one. You can see there's a definite groove that was wore into it. Now, this is right where the oil flows, so you can tell that we had some contaminants in the oil, probably just a lot of that metal over time that was wearing a little groove in it. Let me show you number two. All right, this is the second one. It's a little bit lighter, but you can still feel it. Same groove right in that center section. Let's look at number three. All right, here's number three. This one is a little bit of an anomaly. It actually shows that the crank was a little bit misaligned. So when this was installed, it was accelerating the wear right here and right here, but we don't see any groove in the center. It's actually okay bearing wear. It just shows that the block needs to be line honed. All right, here's the fourth one. This one has 
a little bit of copper showing right there which is what the center of these bearings are made out of so that's probably where the copper was showing up on our oil sample report so very good thing we're doing a rebuild now so the downside is that we do have to rebuild this engine but the upside is because we caught it early enough i think that the crank will only have to be polished i don't think we're going to need a new crank or any oversized bearings so i'm going to get this put back together i'll probably make a little stand for it to make it easier to transport and then we'll get it over to the machine shop All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you're enjoying this build. Next episode, I will be traveling to Montana in order to buy another broken forklift. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.